Intimacy is not automatic. And I'll show you how to look at intimacy so that you can facilitate more intimacy into your relationship and not create the opposite of intimacy, which is resentment with each other. So intimacy, remember, I taught you that intimacy is how much you know the person. It's how well you know the person. It's like if you've had a best friend for seven or 10 years and you know that person really well, you're very intimate with that person. It has nothing to do with sexuality. It doesn't have to do with sex. It has to do with how well you know the person. So when you're tremendously intimate with your partner, it means you know the person a lot. And the problem with intimacy in relationships is that it's taken as given already. Intimacy is taken as a given. Instead, and actually what intimacy is being portrayed on in relationships is that it's taken as granted already. So I want you to look at it in a very different way. And I want to talk about lying in a relationship. I want you to deserve intimacy and look at intimacy as something you deserve and you work at deserving and you enhance yourself. You enhance yourself so that you can deserve intimacy. In other words, in what ways in your life and how can you in your relationship deserve the intimacy of your partner, deserve the the ability in your relationship where your partner can be themselves and be able to communicate exactly what's on their mind with you. And so there's a thing in relationships that occur called lying and it occurs often with couples, with partners, with relationships, whether it's couples or more than a couple or multiples of partners. And uh, let's talk about the ethics of lying. Now remember that a moral code is what you grew up with, the codes in which you grew up with. Ethical codes are codes that you join into, like the ethics of doctors, they have business ethics. The rules in which a community is, is, um, has created and you join into it. Is lying moral or ethical? So. The idea that, lie, that something is either moral or ethical is dependent on the person. It's individually dependent. And I'll show you what I mean. So lying in and of themselves is neither positive or negative. It's neither moral or immoral. Do you understand? It's neither bad nor good. Depending on the individual, it's going to be immoral or moral. It's going to be either bad or good. When I say moral or immoral, it just, it just means bad or good. Immoral is bad. Moral is good. The good for the person. Now, let me give you an example. When someone asks, does this look, does this uh, dress make me fat? Most of you probably lie and say, no, it doesn't make you fat. You look amazing. You look cute. Now, is that a heinous crime? Is that an awful, unethical, and immoral thing to do? Most of you will probably say, no, that's not immoral. It's not bad. That's good. But you lied. Now, an awful format of lying would be if you created a betrayal, if you betrayed your partner for whatever reason, a betrayal is uh, something you've agreed upon or some, something mostly implied in a relationship because you're not such an open communicator. Most of the things that are in a relationship that create bad communication and bad relationships are things that are implied. So I like to say that the less you imply things in a relationship, the less the things are implied, the better the relationship, the more open the communication. So when something a betrayal is anything which you agreed upon would not do, but you did. It's a format of betrayal. Now, if you lie about it, then most people, most of you will probably recognize that as something immoral, something not good, something bad. So what I pointed out to you, what I've made clear to you is that lying is neither bad nor good. 
There are good lies, bad lies. So lying in and of themselves is not a bad thing. What makes it a bad thing is the dynamic between the relationship, the, between the two people, whether one person thinks it's bad or one person thinks it's good. Now you have this dilemma where, where one person thinks it's good, one person thinks it's bad. Because you have two conflicting moral codes or ethical codes. I want you to remember always that even people you grew up with, with the, grew up in the same community, same beliefs, same values, will have completely different ethical codes and moral codes than you. So how do you facilitate a relationship where your intimacy is deserved, where the person does not need to lie in a relationship, meaning complete intimacy. When, so, when some, someone can be completely themselves, does not need to lie to you because they don't need to, they can completely be themselves, you have 100% intimacy. My cat is uh, running towards me like it's about to ram me. Samin Kuhn. I'll show her. I'll show it to you. Corby. Corby, come here. All right. So when you have a relationship where the person does not feel the need to lie, then you have deserved the intimacy. They feel they can be themselves. They don't feel they will be judged or condemned or be emotionally terrorized when they are themselves in the relationship, then you have complete intimacy. Most of you don't have that. You probably don't have that because I recognize not virtually all relationships, some in, some, in some form, they have to lie. Whether it's because they can't be themselves in a relationship, uh, by nature, they can be by nature, be themselves, or the, the individuals within the relationships are not mature enough to uh, facilitate non-judgmental and open communication, not because they're bad people, they're great people, they mean well, they have a lack of knowledge of how humans, how we are as humans. So, for you to be able to have complete intimacy, you have to facilitate one thing, and that is open communication in cahoots with non-judgmental acceptance. To be non-judgmentally accepting, I've gone over it, I've, I've taught you that before. It's your ability to recognize that each person, each individual is an individual, and they will have completely different ethical codes and moral codes than you, completely different desires, wants, likes and fears and you must facilitate um, your ability to accept and not accept. Here are the things that you will not tolerate and here are the things you will accept. When they recognize the line between what you'll tolerate and what, what you won't tolerate and what you will accept, then they know um, where you stand. They know who you are as a person. And you can have now non-judgmental acceptance. Why? Why can they feel non-judgmentally accepted when you can communicate what you'll accept? It's because when you say you'll accept something, it means you'll play 100%. When you say you won't tolerate something, th then they know what you will accept. In other words, when, when you... When you can communicate where the boundary lies, they know how far they can go. You understand? When you know where the water line is, you know where to step so that you don't get wet. Do you understand? When they know what you can accept, they know where, when they know where your boundary lies, they know what you can accept. And so you must facilitate open communication. So what I'm trying to say, I have 30 seconds. What I'm trying to say is that when someone lies to you, you deserved it. How can you deserve a relationship where you have more intimacy so that there are no lies? And that's what we teach. Go to greatrelationshipsyou.com to learn how to, more about how to facilitate amazing relationships. See you tomorrow.